Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you how to use symbols to create symmetry. In this case, create snowflakes. They are a great example as they are perfectly symmetric. So let's have a look at the symbols that I used for these. There'll be three symbols in the symbol panel when I bring it up, one for each of the snowflakes. The first one is just made up of lines with a thicker stroke and they scale with the object. If I bring in a new instance of that symbol and alter it, you can see that the initial snowflake gets altered as well. I can delete parts, I could add more parts and the snowflake itself gets altered along with it. In the control panel, you see the different curves that this symbol is made up of. The other two snowflakes are set up the same way just with an edit effect, an inner bevel, which is assigned to the group, so it will affect the group and not each symbol. The last one uses rectangles instead of lines. To show you how the symmetry works, I have a sample with a simple rectangle. If I place that symbol in the screen, it helps to put it on a visible layer and not on the hidden layer above, so let me move that down. There we have it. If I duplicate this symbol and mirror it, move it to the side, I have a left and a right side. And if this symbol now has some content, let me make the content visible. A face with different elements. Once I start moving one of the elements, in this case the eye, it gets moved on all three instances, including the mirrored version. It is a quick and easy way to create symmetry in Affinity Designer, seeing there is no dedicated symmetry tool. Let's use the same approach for a snowflake. I create a new rectangle, turn it to no fill and a wide outline. I turn the rectangle into a symbol. It appears in the symbols panel and changes to a symbol in the layers panel. Inside the symbol, consider it a group. We have the rectangle. I create a second rectangle, give it a wide fill, change the corners to get the pointy edge. I align it with the edge of the rectangle so it's dead set centered and mirror this symbol and we have the basic symmetry of the snowflake. If I duplicate the rectangle now, rotate it, you can see it rotates on either side. For this design, it helps to have another guideline, which is the diagonal. It shows me roughly where the overlap will happen between this symbol and the next one. I duplicate more shapes, create the intricate pattern of the snowflake. This is a trial and error approach try what works, what looks good, and if it doesn't look good, you delete it, change it, and try again. Once I'm happy with the design, I select both symbols, group them, mirror them to have an up and a down side. That's easier to rotate because then the center is in the middle. I select both groups, duplicate them, rotate them holding shift for a fixed angle, which makes it easier to create the symmetry. With all elements in place, I can then go in and change parts of one symbol and all copies of the symbol will be changed instantly. Let's do another approach. This time the base won't be a rectangle, but a circle. Circles have a great edit feature with is the option to turn them into a donut or a pie. In this case, we want to work with a pie. I turn the circle into a symbol, mirror it horizontally and turn it into a pie. The pie gives me angles and I can adjust the angle. In this case, I want 12 shapes. I change the total angle to 360 divided by 12. That gives me my 12 slices of the pie. Once I duplicate the two that I already have on the screen, mirror them vertically, position them so they align with the initial two, select all four, duplicate them and rotate them, duplicate again, and we have a full 360 degree circle. To make it easier for myself, I group all but the first symbol. 
lock that group so I don't accidentally work on those and just work on the first symbol. Create my rectangle shape. Make sure I place it inside the pie as a clipping mask and adjust the corners. Repeat the process of the first snowflake I just created by playing around with the shapes and I immediately see the result. I did the first snowflake by creating a segment first and turning that into a symbol. This time I have the symbols in place and create the content inside the symbols so I immediately see how my snowflake design will look. Once you're happy with the design, remember to turn the stroke of the pie shapes. At the beginning of the video, I showed you effects that I attached to the snowflakes. If I attach the effect directly to the symbol, it will be duplicated along with the symbol. You can see the dividing lines if I do that. If I attach the effect to the group instead of the symbol, it works just fine and the whole group shape will be the basis of the bevel effect. It will be similar with the outer shadow. The outer shadows would overlap when attached to the symbol. They work fine when attached to the group. The same applies to a gradient fill. If I apply a gradient fill to this, it would be applied to the pie shape, which is our clipping mask as well. I bypass that by using a gradient overlay, adjust the colors, a light blue shading to white. I reverse the angle because I think it'll look nicer with the blue on the outside. Finally, I change the color of the bevel. The shadow should be a blue, not a black, to give it more of that icy feel. That's the finished design. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, click on the notification icon, leave a comment below to let me know what you would like to see on my channel, and I will see you again soon.